For a case of knee pain, using our mnemonic old carts will note the onset, or when did your pain start? Did it come on suddenly, or was it more gradual? And do you remember what you were doing at the time? For the location, we'll ask our patient to point with one finger. As we'll see below, knee pain is going to be either anterior, medial, lateral, or posterior. For the duration, we want to know if your pain has been constant since it started, or if it's more intermittent. If that's the case, we'd like to note the frequency. That is, how long does an episode of your pain last for, and how many episodes have you been having per day or per week? Next, we'll want to note the progression. Does your pain appear to be occurring more frequently or more severely? Or if there has been no progression, we'll also want to state that in our patient note to show we've asked. To help characterize the pain, we'd like some descriptors, sharp or dull among others. And since this can involve the nerves, we'll also ask about any numbness, tingling, or motor weakness, aggravating and alleviating factors, radiation, treatments tried, and severity on a scale of 1 to 10. And again, if there are no aggravating and alleviating factors or radiation, we'll also want to state that in our patient note to show we've asked. We'll break down our case of knee pain into traumatic and atraumatic causes. For all cases, let's order a CBC, serum electrolytes, an x-ray of the right or left knee, and if we note any neuropathy, a nerve conduction study and an electromyogram. In a knee strain or muscle strain, our supporting points include knee pain, an onset that's sudden after a fall or trauma, and progressively improving because it's involving the muscle, and alleviated by conservative management, ice, NSAIDs, or muscle relaxants. In a knee sprain or ligament, our supporting points include knee pain, an onset too that's sudden after a fall or trauma, with a characteristic popping sound, characteristic limping, and as we'll see in our physical exam coming up, a decreased range of motion. We could also see the special tests of anterior drawer, posterior drawer, valgus, or varus. And we'll add to our workup an MRI of the right or left knee. In a meniscal tear, we'll have knee pain and the onset too will be sudden after a fall or trauma with a characteristic locking, catching, or giving out. We'll see a decreased range of motion and we can note a positive McMurray in our physical exam. And we'll order too an MRI of the right or left knee. In osteoarthritis or DJD, we'll see knee pain, an onset now that's more gradual but progressively worsening. It will be aggravated with use, standing or stairs, and alleviated with rest. Classically, it's seen in an older patient, and also, like for all the lower extremities, a history of obesity because of the weight increases the risk. In pes anserinum, the pathology here involves the tibial tendons. So the medial tendons include the sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus, and therefore it's going to cause knee pain on the medial side. It will be aggravated by stairs and alleviated by rest and conservative management, ice or NSAIDs. And the patient can have a history of risk factors, osteoarthritis or obesity. And we could order an MRI of the right or left knee. And the MRI in these cases is more to rule out pathologies such as a sprain, a ligament sprain, or a meniscal tear. In iliotibial band syndrome or ITB, the pathology again is involving the tibial tendons where the tendons are inserting onto the tibia. This time it's the lateral tibial tendons which are coming from the gluteus maximus and tensor fasciolata. So we'll have knee pain on the lateral side. It will be aggravated by running and alleviated by rest or conservative management, ice or NSAIDs. And we can note a positive noble sign. In patellofemoral pain syndrome, the pathology here is involving a misaligned patella. Normally, the undersurface of the patella bone is going to be smooth, and if the patella gets misaligned, it's going to be causing friction and pain. So we'll have knee, or particularly patella pain, so it's going to be anterior. It will be aggravated by running, stairs, squatting, and alleviated by rest or with conservative management, ice or NSAIDs. And we'll note in our physical exam positive special test for patella grind, also known as the Clark's test. Patella tendinitis, also very commonly known as the jumper's knee, will have knee pain. And this is going to be inferior to the patella. It's also going to be anterior, and it's inferior because this is involving the tendon connecting the patella. The pain will be ag aggravated by jumping, running, or stairs, or squatting, and alleviated by rest, conservative management, ice, and NSAIDs. In a popliteal or baker cyst, we'll see a knee pain, and now we're going to have posterior will either see swelling or our patient could note and describe swelling and it will be aggravated by standing. We'll order an ultrasound on the right or left knee. 
and rheumatoid arthritis will see a knee pain and will be aggravated in the morning, high yield morning stiffness, and alleviated with use. And also will note additional bilateral small joint arthritis in the wrists or fingers. And we can note a positive systemic symptoms in our view of symptoms for fatigue, fever, or weight loss, among others. Also a positive family history. We'll order an ESR CRP, a rheumatoid factor, and anti-CCB antibodies. In systemic lupus erythematosus, we'll see knee pain, a malar rash, or oral ulcers, and our patient can also be complaining of photosensitivity, or rain outs, or blue fingers in the cold or times of stress. And as well, like we saw in rheumatoid, we can know positive systemic symptoms in our review of symptoms, including fatigue, fever, or weight loss. We could also see a history of abortions in our OB or gyne history. We'll order an ESR CRP, an ANA, anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies, and anti-Smith antibodies. In crystal arthritis, we'll have knee pain, and now in our inspection and palpation, we'll note an erythema, warmth, or swelling. For gout, we'll see podagra also possibly in the big toe. We could have tophi or crystal deposits in the ear or behind the Achilles, and our patient will have a history of heavy drinking or diuretic use. And in pseudogout, it's typically seen in an older patient. We could also note a history of a trigger, a surgery, or a recent medical illness. We'll order an ESR CRP, an arthrocentesis for gram stain culture microscopy, and a serum uric acid level. And finally, in septic arthritis, we'll see a knee pain. And again, in our vital signs, we're going to now see a fever and an inspection palpation and erythema, warmth, and swelling. In the gonococcal form, it's going to be most common with a female because they're asymptomatic gonococcal carriers. It will be accompanied with a characteristic pustular rash and a history of SCDs or multiple sexual partners. Or in the non-gonococcal form, staph aureus or strep, we'll have a history of skin trauma, abrasions or cuts, diabetes or IV drug use, and we'll order here at blood cultures. So today we're going to do an examination of the lower limbs, particularly the knee. Okay, we're going to follow the algorithm we have, G-I-P-R-O-M-M-R-S-P. That is gait inspection, palpation range of motion, muscle strength, sensations, reflexes, and pulses. So first of all, I'm going to take permission from the patient to examine his knee. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, looking at the knee, I'm going to look at both of them and compare them to each other. So both knees are non-distended in terms of uh, no signs of trauma, um, no abnormal colorations of both knee. They both look good. Okay, so you have very good looking knees, sir. Yes. So um, the next step is palpation. You want to touch the knees and see how they feel. If the patient feels hurt, and I'm going to tell him at any point you feel pain, please let me know. Okay. So I'm going to start from above the patella and try to work my way around the patella. Okay. I'm also going to go behind the patella to feel if there's any pain anywhere. Do you feel any pain? A little bit on the medial side. On the medial side, okay. Sorry, I'm going to try to avoid that area, okay? Thank you. Any pain around the back? No. Okay, very good. So now that is done. And I'm going to do it on both sides, but just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to do it on just one side, but you should do it on both sides the same way. All right, so in that situation, I'm going to go into the range of motion. I want to see how well it, it moves. So could you Please extend and try to kick my hand. Okay, good. Could you try to kick my hand here? Good. Thank you very much. Okay, um, you have good range of motion on the knee. Again, I'm going to do it on the other knee as well for the sake of your exam and for the sake of time. I'm just going to do it on one knee. All right. So then next, we've done the range of motion. I'm going to do the MRSP, which is a muscle strength, reflexes, and uh, sensations and pulses. All right, Mr. Mr. Heskowitz. Could you just lift, okay? Now, could you kick? Thank you very much. Could you pull, okay? And now I'm done with this area of the knee. He has five of us, five strengths bilaterally on both sides. And then I'm gonna look downwards, okay? And I'm going to have him, if he could show me a range of motion of his ankles, could you do this? As you mean this is your foot, could you do this for me? Could you do this? Could you go up? Could you come down? Okay, thank you very much. And for this here, I know you've shown me, but could you show me again? Just take this up. Yeah, thank you. Take this. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so we've done the muscle strength for up, and now I'm, I want to go to his foot. 
So could you lift up? Thank you. Could you pop the brakes? Thank you very much. So I'm going to wash my hand again, OK? So at this point, I want to do the sensations and the reflexes, OK? Um, I'm going to have to grab this and get ready to use it, OK? So I'm going to check your reflexes, OK? So I just free this up for me. Thank you. OK? And then free this up for me. Good. Is it up for me? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's up for me. I'm also going to check your, it's called Babinski, okay, to check if your reflexes are okay down here. So, Babinski is going to be done this way from the lateral side of the foot. Okay? So, you're looking for down going toes. Up going is going to be abnormal. And I'm going to check your sensations. So, sir, I'm going to check your sensations. If you feel anything, let me know, okay? Could you close your eyes for me? You feel that? Yes. You feel that? Yes. You feel this? Yes. You feel this? Yes. Okay, very good. Please, with your eyes closed as well, let me know if you feel this and let me know how it feels like. Does it feel sharp or soft? Sharp. Okay, and do you still feel it? Yes. What about on this side? Yes. And you still feel it? Yes. OK, very good. Since I've touched his leg, I'm going to quickly sanitize my hand. OK, and I want to do the special test. And I'm going to have the patient lay down. So sir, would you need help to lay down? Thank you. OK. okay. Please stay relaxed. At this point, patient to had told me from the beginning he had a pain on the medial part of his knee. So I'm suspecting a medial collateral ligament here. So I'm going to do a special test now. I'm going to start with anterior drawer tests. So I'm going to have the patient put his knee this way. OK? And then I'm going to sit on his foot, if that's OK with you, and pull. Any forward laxity of the knee shows me a, a positive anterior drawer test, which tells me there's an anterior um, collateral ligament tear, cruciate ligament tear, excuse me. Then I have him relax, OK? Um, then I'm, I want to check for the valgus and varus tests. So doing that, I want to attempt to push the leg laterally to the thigh. So I'm going to support the thigh to make sure it doesn't go lateral and put my hand here. So just feel relaxed, OK? Then I'm going to pull. If you truly had a medial collateral ligament here, I'm going to see laxity of this area over here. The same thing will be done to the left leg, the left knee. Then a virus test. I want to push this medially, the leg medially to the thigh. So I support his thigh medially and lateral here. And I do this. Now a tear in his lateral collateral ligament will show me a laxity on the um, lateral side, OK? Then I'm going to do a Lachman's test. A Lachman's test is, has more sensitivity than the anterior drawer test. It also checks for anterior, cruci um, anterior cruciate ligament here. And this is what I do. I just have him support his leg, and I try to pull. Anterior cruciate ligament, I'm going to see increased laxity anteriorly of the leg. Also, I want to check for. Um, locking and catching, which is indicative of a medial meniscal uh, tear. Okay, so I could do that while sitting down, but for the sake of illustration, I'll do that while he's laying down. So could you just extend your leg, your knee for me? Okay, and flex, go back down. Thank you. So I felt no crepitations, no catching, no locking. Okay, and for the sake of completeness, if I suspect a posterior cruciate ligament tear. I'll just have him sit on his foot again. And this time, I'm going to push backwards. No laxity, which suggests, which suggests posterior and cruciate ligament here. So that's it for the special tests. And I'm going to go into the last part, the final part, 
of my of my exam, which is the gate. But before I do that, okay, a couple of things I want to do. Now on the exam, it's not okay to say you forgot to do something. Okay, even if you forgot, just you know, try to finesse it in there. I was supposed to check for his popliteal pulsations, which I can do right now. Yes, I feel it here. And I feel it here. Okay, and check for his posterior tibial, which is right here behind the medium alveolus, and then the dorsalis pedis. Yes, I feel all of them two plus. So thank you, uh, Mr. Heskowitz. So could you stand up for yes. me? Yes. Okay. So I would like you to walk for me, okay? Could you just walk there? Okay. Thank you. Now, what about, if you need help, I'm going to help you, okay? So, please walk back. Let me see how you walk. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. You can take a seat. So, with that, that concludes the knee exam with the algorithm shown there. Okay? And, you know, hope you've learned. Thank you very much.